In this section, we're going to explore the topic of rigs. We're going to find out what different things make up the rig, whether you should actually just buy them from the shop, or whether it's actually better to make your own. So, firstly, the different parts of the rig are Simon, I'm going to, yeah. yeah, if you point say it's, out. Like you say, John, it's best to tell your own because all the venues are different, every, all the canals are different. So obviously, again, going back to that, going to your local shop, it will know what size floats you want and, and line and everything like that. Yeah. So again, you know, it, again, you're tailing your own yeah. package to suit your own canal like, so. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. Obviously, the first thing you've got in a rig is the line. Yeah, is that uh, the is that what you call the main line? The main or, line, or yeah. That where no, that's the main line where which houses all the the floats, the weights, and and everything else. Yeah. So tell so, me a little bit more about that. What, it's, what? it's quite a fine line. That these days it goes more on diameter rather than poundage. So like in years gone by, in the old days, it was yeah. all poundage, wasn't it? Exactly, three pound breaking strain or four pound breaking yeah. strain. So now it's actually it's diameter. The, yeah, which is like yeah. the width of the Line, yeah, the it? thickness. Yeah. So what's the bit? What's the smallest diameter, and what's the sort of? Yeah, again, um, that goes back. To, well, it goes back to front again on that one. It's um, the smaller the number, the finer the line on that one. Yeah. So, so again, it's not like hooks. So a 0 0.6 line, which would be is, about the very fine. Is very yeah. fine line is going to be thinner than an 0 012 line. Yeah. And you so, can get thicker than 012. You, you can, it goes 015, 0, 0, 020, all sort, Yeah, it just keeps on going up like so. Yeah. yeah. So for, for making a, a rig on a typical canal. Canal, yeah. What, yeah. what diameter or strength of main line are you going to be using? Main line, I normally use about 010, 011, that sort of things. But this one's 010, 7, this one, so it's nearly yeah, it's 011. Nearly 011. Yeah, and two, so it's very strong for its diameter like so. Yeah. Um, quite a thin line, but as you. As you progress in your fishing, you'll realise that using thin lines easier to control in the wind than using really thick line. So that's yeah. why we. And how about the fish? Line. The thicker the line, I assume, well, the easier it is for the fish yeah, to see. Yeah, and it, it's just a lot better to use thin. Thin line is a lot easier to control in the wind and stuff like that. So, yeah, so yeah. that's 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 the main line. That's the main line. Now the, the floats. Let's talk about yeah, the floats. Yeah, a little probably bit. the most important part. Well, as um, a child, I used to collect yeah. floats. I used oh. to buy loads of floats, and they never ever got used. Not just me. Not I'm just you. Still collect floats now. Do you? Well, yeah. just got hundreds of them. So you go into a shop, and yeah. there literally is hundreds. There's it hundreds. Seems to be. Yeah, yeah. So what are you looking for to fish on a typical um, narrow canal, like like, a say nice, in the Midlands or the North? West? Yeah, you just want a nice sort of um, slimish body there. That's quite a nice, just an all-round sort of shape, nothing fancy. And these particular ones have got interchangeable tips. So if you're, you know, somebody that can't you uh, can't see like red tips, you can yeah. just pull them out like that. Whoops, and put a yellow tip in. Well, we've all got that. We've all seen that um, bit, you know, where the light's funny and it's like a white background on the canal. Yes. So then you could use a black tip. So we just pull that out again. Wow. Well, they never existed. When no. I was alone. No. So we just got a black tip on that one then. So. So we just, like, uh, like my uh, favourite's red. Yeah. Like so, so I always so put the red on. Like. Who's the manufacturer of this float? Drennan What's make these name? ones. So that's, that's a Drennan float. Yeah, it's a Drennan float. And has it got a special name? Um, it's an SF2. These are yeah. nice floats. And what what is good about them as well? Um, obviously, you generally have two types. You have wire or carbon on the so stem. That's the bottom bit. There. That's the bottom that's part. That's what you call the stem. Yeah, wire is like a bit more easy to control, especially in wind and stuff like that. Yeah. When the conditions are poor. So, but this is. But the trouble is, the only downside of a wire is it bends, and it once wire bends, it goes out of shape and it doesn't work properly. So it makes the bait behave funny. Yeah, but That's these particular mean. floats have got a special wire that it's like a bendy wire. It's so, got some sort of memory. I yeah, think. I think it's titanium wire or something like that, where you can bend it like that and it comes back into shape. So for new anglers that are a bit, yeah. you know, a not, bit like me, a bit yeah, clumsy, a bit and clumsy. Yeah, 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 they're perfect because you can never ever bend that out of shape. So you can, you know, really, really good for. And I use them a lot on my own fishing, to be honest, and for certain things, and the, the yeah. perfect like. Perfect. That's an important point, isn't it? Why Why would you expect a beginner to use worse equipment? Exactly. Than, yeah. You know, because if you were a great tennis, I mean, Roger Federer could probably play tennis with a cricket bat mm. and still yeah. and still beat us. It's all you're just putting the odds in your favour again, aren't you? Of yeah. Trying to give yourself the best yeah. start, like. So yeah. how the heck? I can't work out. Yeah. How the f how the the um. Float attaches to the line. Yeah. Right. How's that going to work? So all we do. 
So we've got our line, and because we're in the kitchen here, all I do is just weight that spool down with a the weight there. Oh, that's, like that's that. the uh, the green lentils. I, yeah. assume, I assume baked bean tin and work yeah. equally oh, as no, well. No, it's got to be lentils. It's got to be lentils. It's got to be lentils, yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so we're just plenty of room to work with there. Mm -hmm. So we've got like a, a tight line so we can work with the rig there. Got you. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to do is thread on the float. So we're going to choose which float we use. And I do that a lot in my own fishing. I'll buy a different size. Look, there's four different sizes there. But it's but you get used to looking at the same sort of float. So it's nice to have different so sizes in the same float. So they're going to take different numbers different of, weights. Different yeah. numbers of these yeah. weights they're yeah. going to take, are they? But like a general on the canals that we fish locally around here, um, that's a 0.3 in size, which is a point nice... 0.3 of a gram. 0.3 of a gram. So it's like a nice size for fixing. It's not, the canals around here aren't very deep. Yeah. Close in, so that's a, a nice size of it, like an all-round size. So yeah. for this rig, we're going to use a 0.3 float. So if you lived near a deeper canal, deeper like the canal. ones in Yorkshire yeah. or the Gloucester Canal, you'd we'd use bigger a, again. A heavier yeah. float. Yeah, like uh, like maybe a gram float. Got yeah. Yeah, so we just use a bigger float. Yeah. But these float, you know, you can get a whole range of these, all the same pattern but in different sizes. Yeah. Well, that's very clever. Yeah. Take my hat off to Mr. Drennan for uh, so, that. So we've got the, just make a bit more line there. So it just makes it easy, having that tight line there yeah. just makes it easy to, and it's got, so we've got the line there. Yeah. You see that's got a little side eye. Yes, and it made so out of some sort of metal. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like a stick float, an old stick float from years ago where you'd have rubbers to connect it You on the stem, you'd have it's just got that side eye. So what we do, we put the float on the line, yeah. and see that's got a little eye there? Yes. Okay, and I notice on this one, there's a little bit of glue in filling in that hole of the eye. And so the line won't fit? It won't go it? through, so you know, you might think it's your eyes, like when you can't get it, but just have a little look up to the line, I can see a little bit of glue stuck yeah. in there. So yeah. all I do is get another float, one yeah. of the spare ones, and just just drill it out, sort just of. Just, of okay, yeah, and yeah. all I'm doing there is just, it's got rid of that, that no, little bit of glue so that was there. So now the line will open. Common thing, that can, you know, you could yeah. be thinking it's it's your eyes, but it's actually a bit of glue there stuck. And that's how that goes straight through now, isn't it? That's nice and easy. Yeah, so, so we've now, got the float. Yeah, so you've put that now. The so obviously year. now, it's, obviously you need to fix that because it's just sliding yeah, around otherwise now. Otherwise it can mm. go up and down and all over the place. So yeah. what are you going to do So next? all we do is attach some silicon on the stem. Okay. Yeah. So this was. This, yeah. This came in the in. Yeah. Yeah. Bought ball. that from the shop separately again because. Yeah. You know, and Gareth. And so the man at the shop up. told yeah. you the correct. Again, that all comes in different sizes. Yeah. You know, you could get a rubber that's too too um, the diameter of it is too thick, and it wouldn't it wouldn't clamp onto the stem. So it would the float would end up sliding. sliding yeah. yeah. And it so. need, the float needs to be fixed. Yeah, it needs to be fixed in so, position. So all of, all we do is just cut. A couple of lengths of this off. Yeah. So I've got one there. And another advantage of doing this indoors in the house, isn't Imagine it? Imagine doing this little, outside. Little mm. pieces of plastic can be blown put, away and stuff. Yes, yeah, blown away, and here they can be put in yeah. the bin at the end. And again, all we do is. Are you going to put one on, Simon? No, I'm going to put, put two, two on. Yeah. Put, it, it just sits better on the float, and if one accidentally breaks, we can use it as a spare then. We can slide it down, but they never so break, you, to be honest, not very often. No. So okay. it just if we were just having one there, say if I just put one on the end there, yeah. it would have, you'd have a bit, it just wouldn't sit quite right. There'd be a big, sort of loose bit of line there, so it just sits a bit neater. You do pay a lot of attention to detail, yeah. don't yeah. you, at times? Only me fishing. Only in me fishing, <laughs> yeah. not in your paperwork. No, um, no. Um, but I suppose sometimes it's the detail that makes all the difference between... Well, yeah, just a little bit of effort. Catching um, some fish and not see how we've got those two bits of rubber on the line now. Yeah, look. and they slide. Yeah, so we're yeah. just going to attach that float now. Yeah, shall I bring the float up? You can do, yeah. Be careful with it, don't break it. Yeah. And what I do is just wet the stem so it just goes on a little bit easier. Okay. Yeah. So I've just slipped it on there. Yeah. That's it, so just move that one up. Oops. That's that. Slide him up. One to the bottom of the body and one to the bottom. Again, these this rig making, a lot of clubs are now 
working mm. with their, but with see their, how neat their that is. Sections. See how neat that is. One fix there. If we had one there, it would be a, a bit of a gap of the line there, wouldn't it be a little loop? Yes. And see where I've been messing about putting the um, two rubbers on and, and the line's slightly damaged there? Yeah. All Because we don't want to be using that damaged bit, so we'll just move that up out of the way. Yeah. And just chop that off. So that bit there is damaged line yes. that we... Oh, uh, I see. Do you know what and I mean? Again, so very that important that that yeah. then goes into the bin. And obviously yeah. now we just give ourselves a bit more room, so we'll just yeah. take a bit more line off the spool, and that there, and like that bendy wire. Then see, as I'm with normal wire, when you're moving it up, it's very easy to bend it and kink the float. Yeah. But with that one, it's it's so easy to just to move it up the line. See how I've bent it there. You couldn't do that with a, a normal steel float. Okay. It would be. Uh, yeah. So now we so now what we need to do is put some weights on. Yeah, so explain what weights are. Right, what they do, if we were to put the drop the float in without any weights on, it would probably be it just wouldn't oh, be yeah, yeah right, it's right. there, look. There might be a bit of maybe it's might be a bit of weight on there. Yeah. But see how that's you know, we've so all seen that up, it's all sticking, but it's sticking up. Sticking up what they used to call the a lighthouse. lighthouse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, you know, a boat would probably moor up to it on the canal or something like that, wouldn't it? It's sticking yes. out that much. So you, what you're saying is you don't want the float sticking up no, no. very much out of the water. No, so we need to put some weights on to sort of take it down to this sort of amount that what we like to show. So that's quite a, only a small yeah, amount. Yeah, small amount. The, what do you call that? It's a bristle, a pole bristle, the, that is. So only part of the bristle yeah. should, be, should be actually above the water. Yeah, and we're fishing for, you know, for shy biting fish. So, you know, so again, we're putting the odds in our favour again, just to, to, you know, to make yeah. it, to make it's it Because a right, common right. mistake that you see, isn't it? Definitely, with, yeah, with, definitely. With young anglers having yeah. it stuck up. Yeah. And then, will the wind blow it if it's windy? Well, yeah, the more, you know, obviously if it's sticking out in the air and, and, and if your line's a bit thick as well, it's it's going to blow and it's going to affect all your presentation. So you're that, saying so. that will, you'll end up catching less fish because definitely. of that? Definitely, yeah, yeah. So... Right, we'll put some, some, these are stuck, you can get two types of weights, you can get yeah. stots and shots. Okay. Um, one of them's round, like a round, the shot are round. Yeah. But these stots, they're like a, a like an oblong, is it oblong the right word, shape? Yeah, I think oblong that's the right a, word. a cylinder or yeah. something like that. They're like, they're not round, they're um, like an oblong shape. Yeah. And the, for new, new anglers as well, they're a lot easier to put on the line. Okay, well you so, can hopefully yeah. show us how to put a, yeah. one so, of these stops on the yeah. line. So if I just get some of those out, what we're going to use. Again, you wouldn't again. be doing this on the bank, would no. you? No, and very... again these have got numbers. Um, okay, explain the numbers then. Uh, the, on these, which way around, yeah, it's, again it's back to front again. Yeah. Um, the lower the number, the bigger the weight. So a number 9 stop is a bigger bigger size than a number 12 stot. Okay. Yeah, so you've just got to just bear that in mind, all, you know, the hooks, yeah, numbers, this is, and this is, yeah, elastic numbers, this is it's all... quite complicated. I know, it's so complicated, it isn't it, yeah. But hopefully, by listening to this... Yeah, so I'm going to get a few number nines as well. Yeah. And a couple of number tens. So we've got three different uh, sizes there. Right. And as well, it's best to put them on with pliers. Um, I found out the hard way over the years when I, I used to put them on with my teeth. Yes. And I've worn away all my teeth well, on the front. That's so. a health and a sensible yeah, health definitely, and safety yeah. Yeah. Uh, issue. And because, all they do... Because I think they're made of lead, aren't they? These very small ones, or uh, used to be. Used to be, didn't they? Yeah. 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 So. And so, under no circumstances, no, we don't make be the same them. mistake as and Simon on, made. And to be honest now, putting them on, with it, it needs and it's more, you're putting an even pressure on and everything, so... So again, it's making that bait yeah. presentation more yeah, natural. Yeah, far better, like putting them on with pliers. So all I'm doing, there's a little, see there's a little groove in the stock there? Yes. Yeah, so I'm just laying that against the line. Whoops. Like that. I'm going to put some very tiny number 12s on first, but I'll explain why in a second. Oh, we've done that way around. Oops. There we go, on the, on the light, so we're just... So that's there, that's pinched on there, look. I'm just sliding up. And they can slide up and down. And they, they can, yeah. And yeah, they if don't, don't cause any... Yeah, you don't put them on too... If you, you, know, don't sort, you don't have to squeeze them on too hard. You know, yeah. so just an even nice, and that's so, what you can do. Apply is a nice even yeah. pressure. Why would you want to slide these weights or stops up and down the line? Where we just, you know, as we're fishing, um, 
you know, a lot of times we'll move our shots around to, you know. What's the what's the point if you never fished before? Yeah, a lot of the time, um, for example, when we first put a bait in, all the yeah. fish go down to the bottom. Yeah. Quite easy to catch. And, so you, you know, want so your bait to go down to the bottom quickly? Quite quickly, yeah. So we have a lot of the, the weight in the rig down to the bottom of the rig. Yeah. But as they get a bit, you know, two or three of them, a few of them get taken out of the shoal, they get a bit more cagey, so that's when we use, so, we spread these out yeah. a bit more. So do the fish actually, are they always on the bottom or are they actually No, they're all up? sorts. And I think when the, a lot of the time on the canal when we first put a ground bait in, they're straight on it. And but as they get a bit more tricky to catch, some perhaps drift about more, and so that's when moving your shots and it's stuff a lot like to that. Learn yeah. in this fishing yeah. Uh, yeah. business, isn't there? So I'm just going to put. It's just not mm. really easy, and um, yeah, you know. And so I've wow. just put. I'm going to put three of those tiny ones on to begin with. Again, we'll go into why on that. We'll just put these shots on first, and we've got a nice little tube here to test the weights. Okay. You know, so, so this full is full of water. Full yeah. of water, yeah. So. So we're just going to put some number nines on, which are bigger than the tens for our bulk shop. So we're, you know, we're pretending that we don't know what it takes. Yeah. So it's so that's what we've got this tube here for. We've got you know, which again, I've got a big water butt outside. I can do it in, but if it's like yeah. the weather's like today, like it's uh, it's nice to have that tube indoors to do it. Like so, I'm just pinching them on evenly like that. Not hard. If you pinch them on too hard with this fine line, the line might break. So, yeah. Um, so just pinching them on. But like you keep on saying, John, it, trying to do this outside. In a, on a windy day. Yeah. Yeah. Cold. Yeah. Yes. Like on our matches, like you know, it's we've got lots of these in our box that are already spare for tangles and that. Because if you're trying to do this in the middle of a match. Yeah. You know, so actually you need more than one rig. Yeah. Once you yeah. get serious about your fishing. Yeah, but just you know, just it's not it doesn't take long once you're uh like anything in life, the but yeah. the more you practice That's it. the easier mm. it gets. Or as the golfer Gary Player once said, the more the more you practice, the luckier, luckier you get. get. Yeah. And there's an element of truth in that as well. Yeah. So we'll see how we're getting on wise on that. And again, I've sort of damaged that bit of line there. Yeah. So I'm just going to snip him off there. Well, it's true to say, if you're using thicker lines, you probably get less damage. Yeah, but it, we, you know, we, so, you we, we're, all, we're trying to get in that bit of using this fine line, aren't we? So, true. Yeah, yeah, so this is my like a little canal here, really, so I can yeah. test him in there, look. Okay. So that was a good guess, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I think that comes from, yeah. Yeah. as yeah. Gary Player said, I think. Yeah. Um, but say, um, about it is but perfect, perfect, that is. Perfect to yeah. me, but... Yeah. Um, um, what do you think? Yeah, and that's why we've got our little shots as well. So I've got the shots that I want down there. Yeah. But see these little trimmers I call them, those shots? Yeah, those so are the smallest ones. The, the smallest ones. So say I would put, drop the float in then and it was very, very dotted down, like yeah. too too much. Yeah. If I'd have took one of the big ones off, it would have popped up too much. So they're like for fine tuning. Right, yeah. And especially as well, when we've been doing our Let's Fish events, if, it, if you're a new angler, it's hard to sort of, something that's really dotted down, if people aren't used to looking at floats, it's so hard to um, to focus on it. You know, if you're saying, look at the yes. float, and they can't they can't really see, and they're not. Sometimes then, yeah. coaches will, will exactly. have the float sticking out more yeah. than what you perhaps should. So if it was, you know, on one loads of events where we've had complete novices come, I've just nipped one of those off just so more of this is showing. It just gives them a better experience. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so that one really is perf ready to go, really. That's, that's just right, isn't it, there? Yeah. Yeah. So what we do, so that's, so those trimmers there, we're yeah. gonna sh put them out of the way. But what we do, we'll just slide that up to there. Yeah. Move these out of the way. So I've put nice easy pressure on and it's the sliding nicely on them. And they don't tend to damage the line these stops either. Putting them on with the pliers really helps. Got it's yeah. like an even pressure yeah. on them and it doesn't you know what I mean? So that's an important uh, Yeah. So I'm just gonna snip yeah. off that, that last bit there, the damaged stuff. What's that? Oops, put that out of the way. So a bit more spare. Handy that tin of things, isn't it? Tin lentil stuff, isn't it? Yeah. So obviously we've got no hook on the end now. 
Yeah, I'm going to ask you about that. Yeah. 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 Um, How are you going to uh, attach the two? Right. And is the line the same strength? No, it's always, yeah, it's, we always have a weaker hook length. Yeah. Uh, two reasons, like we, that might be a little bit thick to use direct to a hook. Yeah. So again, we're thinking diameter, so we've got 0, 10 diameter main line. Yeah. Or 011, I think. Or 011, yeah. yeah, yeah, and we use a weaker hook length, which serves a couple of purposes. If we get snagged up on the bottom, when we pull, if we have to break the line, we only lose the bottom eight inches of the line. Well, that's important, isn't mm. it? Because if you lost several metres of well, line it, yeah. and it ends up in a tree or yeah. something, that can damage, and if we tied a hook direct, damage birds, couldn't it? Yeah, if we tied a hook direct, when we pulled for a break, there is a, you know, there is a chance that we could lose everything, all the shot and everything. Yeah, and you float, which is quite a lot of money. Yeah, isn't it? So and you're it's, only going to lose a, a hook. Yeah, a small amount, yeah. 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 So what we need to do, we're going to use a loop-to-loop -loop connection for the hook length. Okay. So we need to tie a little loop in the end of the main line to house the hook Lovely. length. Uh, you can use figure of eight knots, yeah, um, which are a bit stronger to be honest. But but to, to begin with, if you just use a normal loop, you yeah. won't go far wrong. And so you're that's wet just the line as well. When you're I, doing do, the knots. I do when I'm going to do the knots. So just formed a loop. Yeah. Whoops. Like that. Just a normal loop. Twice through. Twice through. Yeah. Yeah. And this is just a normal loop knot. Normally in my own fishing, I'd use a figure of eight loop. But again, you know, we don't want to make it too complicated and everything. It's easy to tie those. That's and what I, I used to tie when yeah, I fished yeah, as a child. So. Yeah. And we've just got two, see those two little pegs there? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. This is to form before. a tiny loop. So I've just put one end of the loop there and one end in there. Yeah. So it just traps between the two. Oops. So just. Tighten up there, and that's a bit where I moisten the loop there. And that helps with the strength of the knot. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. See, we've got a nice little tiny loop there, and we just need to trim that end using the scissors. There we go. Lovely. I'll uh, I'll put that over here. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, with the other. And see, we've got a nice little small loop there, isn't it? That's a very small. Mm. Yeah. And obviously, we want to put our hook on there now, and. Again, we're going on the theme of being, you know, we so just, things just easy. Just remind me again of the hook sizes. The hook sizes, right. So the bigger the hook number, yeah. the smaller the hook. So 26 is the smallest, 26. going up to like number two or yeah. something is the biggest. And on the what? canals, a lot of the time we use the 22s, like a nice sort of small size. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I mean, I always use a 20. Yeah. Is that, is that also okay? 20, well, you drew a lot better pegs than everybody else, so you could have well, used a 20, exactly. yeah. 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 <laughs> So 20s so, or 22s. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. And these come already tied, these are like. Like, I do tie my own, but yeah. again, it's so much easier. You know, you, you've got them all tied. Yeah. And they're not, like, you get some hooks to nylon where they're all in a coil and then you can get tangled. But these yeah. are on a nice card. So who are these made by? Guru make these. Yeah. So they're like a nice Something fine... Guru. Yeah, nice fine wire hook. Yeah. So it's just a matter then of taking it off the card. It's got a loop in one end and like hooks on the car the other end. And how many how many hooks would and you get if you eight bought? in those? Uh, eight, yeah. Eight hooks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And not expensive. I think they're about what are they now? Two ninety nine for eight $2 hooks. And to the line, and you're not going to mess about tying yeah. them at home. I mean, you could learn to tie your own. You could. And yeah. If, and if you get involved with a club that's part of Let's yeah. Fish, and the coaches will teach you to do that you yeah. know, in the classroom. And, yeah. And These have got a very small micro barb on them. Yeah. See that little barb there. Yeah. Um, because a lot of the hooks that we use are the fine ones, are, they're all, a lot of them are barbed. Yeah. When you go into the barbless, they tend to be more geared towards commercial lakes where you yeah. have to use barbless. What do you think then? What do you well, do for, for the... For yeah, the, personally for the I use barbed, but yeah. there's, there's not a problem with these. It's just getting your pliers, your pliers yeah. again and just squashing down the barb so it makes it barbless. So again, like getting caught in jumpers and stuff like that, I can hook my jumper there. Yeah. And it just comes out because it's barbless now. Oh, I wish I'd have known that when mm. I was a kid. Or in your so. net or anything. So just so that's a good tip. So yeah, yeah. So, so if you just, get it caught in your keep net, yeah. So you so, get it caught in yeah. your, in your jumper or your yeah. Yeah, and they're a lot easier. You know, a lot easier to unhook the fish and stuff like that. So yeah. again, on our events, you know, uh, you know, uh, one hour where we've got an experienced person, like, and they're quite easily using the barb. But and then the next next hour, we've got somebody who's never fished, so we just slip a barbless one on or. Crunch the barb down like gotcha. so. 
So this loop to loop connection, oops, not there. So what we do to, to form this connection there. Yeah. So we pass that, that loop there through the main line loop. Okay. So yeah. I've gone from that, that way there, past my loop of my hook length through that main line loop. Yeah. And then I'm going to get me hook and pass it through the hook length loop. Yeah. So it forms like a, see it's like a double knot connected. Yeah. 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 Just let them see how it joins together now. Oh yeah. Like a really strong connection that is yeah. as well. Yeah. So if we get snagged up, not a problem because that will just break and we're not going to use lose all this. Yeah, not going to lose your, your main line, your float. Yeah. Your weight. You're going to put any weights on the hook okay. length. Oh, that one, that's eight inches like that is. So yeah. you could put a little shot there, but you know, but you don't it's not, need a, to. not a problem. No, if you no. don't, no, no. You know, and it's, and we'll, and we were on that topic before of moving the shots. So if yeah. we, we were going to use this rig for the first time, we'd expect, um, this would be a, like a rig for catching on the bottom you know, weighted down, so, yeah. so I'm just going to put one shot there yeah. by the hook length knot, and I'm going to form a bulk in these, that one there, just move those down, and see it's a little block of shot, so it's... So you call those the bulk, the bulk of shot, shot yeah. that all together? Yeah, so that will take the, take the rig down quite quickly, and then you've got that, that little, what that does as well, when the, when the, when the, the bait's sinking like that, if yeah. the fish intercepts it on the way down, it'll hold that weight up and so, there'll be more float so sticking out. Sometimes then the float, the drop. if the float doesn't. Yeah, go, it's sometimes a fish on the way down, yeah. So that's why yeah. you call a bite on the drop. On the drop, yeah. yeah. So and a lot just, of people don't ever know that those no, are bites. No, so if I move those there and I'll move those trimmers yeah. out of the way. Yeah. So if I need to do anything with those, I can nip them off or put one back on, you know. Yeah. You know for the coaching sort of thing that we've been doing like that, that and even on my own fishing I always use them because if it gets really really windy I can put another one on or take one off do you know what I mean or the light gets bad so I need to take one off so I can yeah. see more float so and then obviously we need to put it on a winder so a winder so explain, yeah, we, explain what a winder is obviously if we had all this if this was loose, it would tangle up and everything. So like if you so. just threw it in a box, it would be Exactly, a mess. yeah, be yeah. a mess, yeah. So what we do, obviously we need to put it on what this is called a pole winder. So if we had this loose in our tackle box, it would tangle up and it just wouldn't be right. So so we wrap it around on this and we have it in, it just it allows it to store it in the box for us and we carry plenty of spare ones of these. Yeah, so I guess you've got dozens of oh, these. Yeah. But too really, many, too many. Too many, but really yeah. you need at least three or four. Yeah, don't yeah. You, just yeah. in case of tangles. So, so I know on like 20 wraps round there is roughly about 10 foot. So, so that's perfect. We can always trim it down when we get there if it's too long. But it's better to have it a bit longer than too short. Yes, because yeah. then you have to tie another piece yeah, of line. Yeah, I don't like doing short. that. Even on my own fishing, I don't like adding line. I like always make them too long. And you then know. you can cut them down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if we just wrap it around. Three, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And incidentally, with the pole winders, they've, all, they've always got a shallow and deep side. If I was to slide the float on there, the body would be sticking, and see how it's shallow? Yes. The body would be sticking out and it'd be getting crushed in the box and stuff like that. So, yeah. So I'll always say. put it on the deep side like that. So I've got 10 ups of there. And then I've wrapped all the line to the float on that side. So well, then I'll go to that side of the winder. And it just keeps it stopped tangling. You do pay tangly. attention to these little details, don't you? And then I'll just tie a loop in the end. Yeah. Same sort of loop as last time? Yeah, same. Yeah. Use figure of it myself, but it's... To be, for years I used um, normal loops and you know it's it was not a problem like, like that. Just while I think on, mm. you've used a uh, Drennan main line here, yeah. are there any, I mean is that the best or? Yeah, I use other? that myself yeah, yeah. Like, um, but there's lots of different makes that you yeah. can use. Such um, as? There's DH line, Dave Harrell line, uh, yeah. Maver line, all the major companies make the line. Yeah. So, and so is it you know, that's your personal preference? Personal preference, yeah. Yeah. And these, you might wonder what these little black things were. Yeah. If I'd have just, see I've trimmed it off there and that's going to be loose. If there was, so it could be getting tangled in the box. Yes. So it won't reach to the end there. Yeah. So all I do is slide that black thing oh, there. Oh, they actually move. Yeah. Hook the loop. 
and then it goes on there and it's mm. ready to go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a Simon Mottram homemade rig. And we will be including that as part of the um, prize package, um, which anybody who en enters the Junior Canal Championships will be able to enter our competition. And part of the winning prize will be this wonderfully made rig.